the second video on BCA tables, if you want to look at the first one, it's an introduction. Uh, and this is designed to be additional practice calculations where you can go ahead and go ahead and try these problems. And then you can come back and look at the solution as I go through them. So if you want to try number one now, the link is in the description below. I'm going to go ahead and start solving this. Uh, we have calcium chloride reacting with excess of sodium carbonate. So we have CaCl2 doing a solution plus sodium carbonate, also a solution. Calcium carbonate it says precipitates because that's an insoluble salt. And the last thing we're going to make is NaCl. And that will be a solution. Now, to balance this, one thing we need is we need a 2 here to balance the sodiums and the chlorides. Okay, so here's our balanced reaction. And then we're going to go ahead and we're going to start looking at the amount of So we have 47.32 grams of calcium chloride. And we have excess of sodium carbonate. I'm going to go ahead and put in the excess right now. 47.32 grams, we're going to have to convert into moles to be able to put it into our BCA. So 47.32 grams of calcium chloride. We would divide that by its molar mass, which is 110. 0.98 grams per mole. Now, it's good to understand a little bit of what you're doing here. Uh, although you can come up with whatever system you want to figure out how to change grams into moles and moles into grams. But 110.98 is how many grams there would be of this chemical if we had one mole. We have less than that amount, which means we should have less than one mole. But we have close to half, so we expect something around 0.4 or something like that. So when we take this and divide it by this, we get an answer that makes sense. We get point. 4264 moles. Okay, so again, that makes sense in the line of what we were thinking earlier that this is about a little under half of what there would be if you had one mole. So we should have a little under half of the mole. Okay. So we're going to assume we start with zero products for both because it's not mentioned. And so what we can then assume is that all of this will react. So we're going to use up all of our one product. This is also going to lose a little bit. We don't know what we start with that's an excess, so we're going to end up with some amount left over. We'll call it still excess. Uh, this is going to drag down to zero. Now, the amounts that things increase and decrease by is proportional to their coefficients in the reaction. So calcium carbonate having a 1 here means that this is going to go up by 0.4264. However, the sodium chloride having a 2, it's going to produce twice as much chemical. So we're going to end up with a gain of 0.8528 moles. So at the end, we're going to end up with 0.4264 moles of calcium carbonate, 0.8528 moles of sodium chloride. We'll have some excess of sodium carbonate, and there'll be no calcium chloride left. So this is the number we want to draw from, but this is the moles. So what we're going to then do is we're going to talk about how many grams that would be. So for grams, we're going to take this and we're going to multiply it by the molar mass of calcium carbonate. So we're going to multiply by 100.09 grams per mole. And again, this is how many grams we'd have if we had one mole. We have a little under half a mole. So we're going to have a little under half this amount. Um, and so our final answer then, switch the color one more time. Final answer comes out to be 42.68 grams of calcium carbonate. So that's the process you do to take through the whole thing. You start by converting whatever you're given into moles, plug that into your BCA table. Okay. All of your changes need to be proportional to the coefficients in the balanced reaction. And then you figure out what you're going to have based on assuming one of these things reacts completely. Okay. Then go ahead and convert it back to grams to give us something we can measure in the lab and do a little more with this mole. Number two. Number two, we have potassium chloride decomposing. How many liters of oxygen gas are produced? So potassium chloride is KClO3. Uh, we can do solid or liquid here. It actually melts at a really low temperature, heating it up. And we're going to produce potassium chloride, solid, and oxygen gas. OK, to balance, we would need a two. A two 
that tells us we have 24.2 grams of calcium chloride. That's our only reactant in this case. So 24.2 grams of KCO3. We're going to divide that by its molar mass. So we're going to change that into moles. Molar mass is 122.55. Now we've got three cyclics to start, so we're going to end up with a three cyclic answer. And this comes out to be 0.197 moles of potassium chloride. Okay, so assuming we start with zero of this and zero of this, all of the potassium chloride we assume will work to compose. So we're going to lose all of it and end up with zero left. Now, potassium chloride each one of those produces one of these, or two of these produce two of these, but, but they're proportional to one another in a one to one ratio. So we're going to gain 0.197 moles of potassium chloride. But the oxygen has a three instead of a two. So perhaps that seems tricky to you. The way you want to think of this is two of these will make three of these. You want to think of it in terms of will I make more or, or, or less? So two of these making three of these, I'm going to have more of this than if I than what I started with this. Or in other words, if I started with two moles of this, I would end with three moles of this. So the amount this changes by has to be proportionally bigger by this ratio of three divided by two. So the two coefficients, you're going to either multiply or divide by them as a fraction, or you're either going to multiply by three over two, or you're going to multiply by two over three. Whether or not you do the larger number on top depends on if you're making more. So in the case where the number here is larger, then you're going to have a larger number on top. If the number here were smaller, like if I were working backwards from oxygen to this, then I'll multiply by two thirds. So 0.197 times three divided by two comes out to plus 0.296. So after my reaction is complete, I'll have 0.197 moles of this. 0.296 moles of that. Okay. The final part says how many liters of oxygen are produced. So I'm going to take my moles here. And we're going to, we're going to assume that this is at standard temperature and pressure, even though we're heating, we'll assume it kind of cools down at the end to regular temperature and pressure. And we're going to say that one mole of any gas at standard conditions gives us 22.4 liters. 22.7 if you want. Um, with 22.4, I get 6.64 liters of oxygen gas as my final answer. Okay. And our last problem here, we're going to do a single replacement reaction between silver and zinc. Silver nitrate and zinc, how much zinc? And this one is unique because this starts with a product. Okay. So we're looking at a single replacement reaction between silver nitrate, so EGNO3, solution. And we're adding that to zinc metal. Okay, so the products of this, we're going to produce silver metal and zinc nitrate. Purposes, we're going to need a two, a two, and once for the zinc. Now, 123.22 grams of silver metal are produced, which means that we need to change this into moles like we did before, but that's actually going to be our after the reaction has taken place. We're going to plug that in here. So, 123.22 grams of silver. We're going to divide that by the molar mass of silver, which is 107.87. In terms of thinking really hard here, we've got 123, 107 grams per one mole, so we have a little over a mole. So our after for silver comes out to be 1.1423 moles produced. Okay. So we're going to assume that we started with zero silver, zero zinc nitrate. We're also going to assume for the time being that 
we ended with zero of each reactant. It doesn't tell us which one is in excess. So we're going to assume they reacted perfectly for a minute and then consumed up every single reactant there. Okay, so for our change, we're going from zero to this value. So then we're gaining 1.1423. Now, if you're following along, you haven't worked through the problem yet. Just think for a second of what would we expect to be the amount of zinc nitrate that accompanies this? Should we divide this by two or should we multiply this by two? Okay. So for this amount, we're getting one of these for every two of those. We should have more silver than we have zinc nitrate. So for this, we're going to have half this amount, which is 0.57115. So if we take that back over here and look at how much of these must have reacted, so for the silver and the silver nitrate, it's a two to two ratio. The changes should be the same, just in the opposite direction. This one's getting consumed. And then for the zinc, there's two ways to think about this. We could either cut this in half, or we could do the fact that the zinc nitrate and the zinc will be the same. Just the one is being consumed. So to start, we must have started with 1.1423 moles of this and point. 57115 moles of zinc. Now, in theory, either one of these could have had more, and then we would have had an excess left over. But we know that's how much actually reacted. And the question said, how much zinc reacted? It didn't say how much zinc did you start with. So we could have started with more zinc than that, but this is how much actually took place in the reaction. So our answer here is this 0.57115. So let's go ahead, like usual, and change that into grams. So we started with 0.57115 moles of zinc. And so to change that into grams, we multiply by the mole mass, which is 65.39. Maybe. There we go. So that's how many grams of zinc we had per each mole. Now we're looking at a little over half of a mole, so we expect this to be somewhere in the 30s, and I calculated it out to be 37.348 grams of zinc. So this many grams of zinc will yield 123.22 grams of silver, as long as there's enough silver nitrate. 